people, and uh, even these ideas uh, influenced his look at society. He wrote an essay that we talked about a little bit called Civilization and Its Discontents. And um, he talked about how people are not fundamentally rational, if you remember that. He, he did not believe people were fundamentally rational. And he was very pessimistic about the future because of uh, how people were by nature. So he gives a negative view uh, about um, the future. Um, he talked about the psychic, psychic lives of human beings and how they are often developed before even the age of five. And we talked a little bit about these uh, stages of development. So I would know some things about uh, Darwin, I would know some things about uh, Sigmund Freud, studying your notes. And then we got into uh, the First World War. And we talked about the war itself, particularly combat itself, how that uh, it's the first time the machine gun was used in warfare and how many lives were taken because of that uh, technology. We talked about poison gas, how it was used for the first time. Submarines were used for the first time in warfare. I, with, the, with the one exception of the one submarine in the Civil War. If you, you may remember that, they're under there, it's like the little ants, it's a little bitty thing. But this is talking about modern day stuff. Submarines for the first time uh, used trench warfare. Uh, World War I is known in particular for trench, trench warfare. So I would know uh, some things about the First World War and of course, tied to that, and I think, think in the same lecture, it was a rather lengthy lecture, we talked about Marxism and communism. So I would study my notes on Marxism, how it is based on a materialistic perception of reality. Everything is looked upon from a materialistic economic viewpoint. Um, We talked about Marx himself and his collaborator. I would know who his collaborator, his lifelong friend and collaborator, who he was. And again, all this comes about during, in the same period, the end of the First World War. The Russian Revolution happens at the end of the First World War, or near the end. Um, so again, I would focus my attention on World War I called the Great War, if you remember the war to end all the wars. Do you remember how many people we said died in the First World War? Anybody? How many? Excuse me? <laughs> well, eight million died, but there were many more million casualties. Okay, as far as uh, people getting blown, arms blown off, and legs blown off, and things of that nature. Um, we talked about uh, Adolf Hitler. Uh, and the uh, Second World War. Um, we talked about how for Hitler, the key to understanding all of history was race. He looked upon everything uh, uh, from the lens of a racial perspective and that's why he wanted to do away with the Jews because he thought they were uh, not just an inferior race, certainly that, but they were a blight on uh, humanity. Um, we talked about the end of the war, particularly in the Pacific front when we dropped the atomic bomb on Japan, or the bombs on Japan. 
I would know the um, uh, president of the United States who was uh, in charge during the time where he ordered the bombing of Japan. Was it Truman? It was. Okay. It was Harry Truman. We also saw that um, Hitler was um, not only anti-Semitic, hating the Jewish race, not only was he embracing a form of social Darwinism, survival of the fittest in many ways, uh, but he also had an animosity toward the Christian religion Though he used the church, I don't know if we talked about it, he often, many of the Lutheran churches were collaborated with him and they took the cross off the altar and put a swastika on, on the altar in many of the churches. But he believed that traditional Christianity was the heaviest blow that ever struck humanity. <laughs> Who was the leader of the Soviets during the Second World War? Paul. Joseph Stalin. <laughs> Joseph Stalin, yes. Uh, Freud talked about the Oedipus complex. What is that? Remember, we, what was the Oedipus complex using the Greek mythology of Oedipus? Yes, exactly. Uh, the um, subconscious attachment to the opposite sex. Um, who wrote Mein Kampf? Uh, mein Kampf means my struggle, and Hitler wrote it when he was in prison uh, before he began to be the Fuhrer uh, of Germany. Uh, it is not the same as the Communist Manifesto. Who wrote the Communist Manifesto? Um, Karl Marx. A lot of people get the two confused, Mein Kampf and the Communist Manifesto. Remember, the Communist Manifesto is a summons to the working class to revolt and overthrow the capitalists. Mein Kampf is simply my struggle, talking about the struggles of Germany uh, to dig out of the war reparations after the loss of the First World War. Who believed that religion is the opiate of the people? Was it the communists or the Nazis? Religion is the opiate of the people, the drug of the people. Who said that? And, and communism. Communism. Not the Nazis. Marx's prediction about the future. Did he think that capitalism would eventually collapse? Yeah. Or, yes, he did. He thought eventually it would collapse of its own uh, weight. Marx at one time identified even he, his whole family with the Lutheran or the Christian faith because his father being an attorney thought it would be good for business. Remember, too, Darwin wanted to become a priest early on before he got involved in his naturalism. Uh, let's see. We talked about the Cold War. Who was the president um, uh, at, at the point in, in the history of the Cold War when we were really having some difficulties with uh, Cuba, who was the president of the United States? Kennedy. 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 Who was the first nation to, wa to launch a satellite in space? Russia. Russia, not the United States. Which formed a totalitarian control over all aspects of culture? Was it the Nazis or was it the communists? The Nazis. The Nazis. Of all aspects of 
What are the three major periods of chronological history in order? The first is the what age? Ancient. The second is the middle or the medieval. And the last is the modern. What are the dates of the ancient age? BC to 580. What about the dates from the medieval period? From what to what? 580. 580. 1480. And the last period modern is from what to what? From 1400 to, to the present. How many sub periods in the modern period? Seven. First being, from 14 to 16. 14 to 16? They overlap in the Yes, they do. First sub period is what? Under the modern period? Anybody remember? What is the first sub period under the modern period? Right. You said Renaissance growth. Uh -huh. Second period is Reformation. Third is Scientific Revolution. The fourth is Alignment. Fifth, Romantic. Sixth, Modern. Last, Postmodern. What would be the dates? 1500. 14 to 16 is the Renaissance period. Yeah, 14 to 16. And in the last uh, overlap of that, Reformation would be the 15 to 16. Scientific Revolution is 16 to 17. Mm -hmm. Enlightenment is 17 to 1770. Romantic, mm -hmm. 1770 to 1870. Right? Okay. What comes after that? Wow. From 1870 to. Right. And then 1972 is postmodern. Right. Uh, the first one, I actually I had this like kind of weird on my notes. Oh, okay. Five thousand uh, any questions? It's very easy.